Hi everyone. I wanted to talk today about week two and your first assignment, which is the 2-1 image processing activity using selection tools and masking to prepare image for final project. So in this particular project, um, you will select one high resolution image that contains an object that you can isolate from its background using Photoshop selection tools and masking techniques. You'll save this and use it in both the magazine and web banner ad and submit a layered PSD file of the final masked object. And this is the important part, being careful not to destroy any pixels in the process. You can feel free to use adjustment layers to adjust the color, contrast, other features if you'd like. Um, and if we click into the rubric, this always gives you a little bit more detail. So I always suggest, you know, making sure you check the rubric out. And this gives you, you know, the full details of uh, the instructions. It'll give you, you know, these uh, websites that you can use for imagery. Of course, you can always refer back to that list that I provided last week. Um, you'll apply Photoshop selection tools and masking techniques to isolate that object and save the photo as a layered PSD file. So you can use it to create the magazine ad and the web banner ad. So what to submit here? Your final submission for this assignment should be a 300 PPI layered 8 by 10 Photoshop file showing the object isolated from its background using Photoshop's masking techniques. All adjustment layers should also be visible and no pixels should be eliminated from the original image. So I found this photo of flip flops on a beach. Now this should relatively be simple to isolate. Um, sometimes people try to use um, fairly complex imagery for this. I like to keep it simple because really what you're going to be doing is using this sort of as a decorative object within your ad layout. So you don't want anything too complex, um, nothing with like a heavy depth of field where things are going out of focus um, because that makes the selection process a little bit tougher. So that's something to keep in mind here. Um, so I have this image downloaded, and of course I've opened it in Photoshop. The first thing I wanna do, I'm going to crop this photo so it's roughly an eight by 10 size. So using my crop tool here, and if your toolbar doesn't look exactly like mine does, you can always change that. You don't have to, but you can play with the workspace to see what tools come up, what tools you know you find you use. I am in graphic and web right now. You can use photography, you can use painting, and you can see how it changes these tools in the toolbars and you know the different um, boxes that pop up over here. So using my crop tool, I'm gonna crop this down so that basically what I've got in the background is pretty much centered around these flip-flops. So once I have that to where I want it, I'm just gonna go ahead and click the Move tool and that will crop my image. Now, of course, since I downloaded this from Pexels, I want to check the size. So I'm gonna to go to Image, Image Size, and you'll notice the resolution is 72 but we wanna resize and resample here. So I'm going to make the width of this eight. That makes the, the height about, about 10, so close enough. And we'll go ahead and make the resolution 300. Just gonna double check, I have resample checked, preserve details. I think this looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit okay here. And let's go ahead and zoom in on this. So typically when you're selecting an image, it does help to be zoomed in. Now Photoshop has really great object selection tools these days. It's a lot easier than it used to be. Um, back in the day when I would do um, object selection, I would typically use uh, the lasso tool. And lasso tool, especially freehand, can be very, very difficult. You have to have a very steady hand 
and you're kind of drawing out, you know, the, your selection, you don't have to do that. <laughs> so one thing that you can use here is the object selection tool. And this is really an amazing tool. And what's nice about this, when you click that tool, you'll see select subject and select and mask up here. So right now, what I want to do is select, select my subject. And because this is the only subject within the layout, it should recognize it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that button. And you can see it's very nicely selected my flip-flops. So we're going to have to do just a little bit of refinement here because we want to cut out this section of um, where the sand's coming through the loops of the, the flip-flops. So what I'm going to do is hit this select and mask button. So this brings up your masking properties and you can see there's some areas here. If I zoom in, that I'm going to want to refine so it didn't pick up this, it didn't pick up this orange in the toe because it's a very similar color to the sand. So using my tools up here, there is the refine edge brush tool, there's the quick selection tool, and the brush tool. I'm going to use the brush tool for this. And you can adjust the sizing of this up here to make it kind of small. I want it to be too big. And I have the hardness set at 100%. And you'll see this plus and minus up here. So the plus is to add it to the selection and the minus is to subtract it. And I'll, I'll demonstrate how to use both. So I have add to selection chosen here. I'm just gonna click and drag this just so it's capturing my edges as smoothly as possible. So I'm going to just take a look at all of my edges and determine if there's anything like this little rough edge here. I'm just clicking and dragging while I hold my mouse down. Now let's say I slip and I get too much. This is where you would go back up here to the subtract from selection and you do the same thing just outside the line. So it's gonna subtract that part out. And for the most part, I think that looks pretty good. So how do we get this part added in? Well, one thing we can do is use the quick selection tool. So we'll want to click on subtract from selection and you can adjust, adjust your brush size. And then if you click and hold, you may have to do just a little bit of adjusting here. and go back to the add to selection and then you can sort of refine those edges. It is kind of touchy so keep that in mind. And then we'll do the same thing here and go to subtract. I'm gonna make this brush even smaller. Sometimes a tiny brush is really the best bet for small details. And that selected that pretty well. So once I have this to where I think it looks pretty good, we can, of course, smooth some of the edges. And actually I just saw this little part over here that I want to adjust. I'm going to just use my brush tool. Just move that out a little bit.
and then we'll go ahead and smooth this just a little bit. I don't recommend using feather um, because that sort of makes the edges um, have a bit of an opacity. So if you want to have really crisp edges, don't use that feathering. Um, shift edge just kind of moves the edge of your selection in or out a little bit. So you can see it's kind of pulling that edge in. And then if I move it to 100%, it moves it out. So I'm just going to keep it right where it is, basically. And, you know, same thing. I think I said this on the video for last week. If you smooth it too much, it's going to really round things off and you may miss some edges, especially if they're sharp edges. If it's more rounded edges like this, not a huge deal, but you can see it's kind of rounding out these smaller details. So I'm just going to keep that set at a smaller number. And then once it looks relatively good, you can always click on this decontaminate colors box. I always like to do that just to see what changes. Um, usually it's not a whole lot, but sometimes when it's stuff that's really hard to refine, like hair, that, that can be helpful. Um, sometimes it could be sort of a hindrance too. So it actually removes a color fringe from your image. This one, there's not a lot of color going on in the background, so I don't think it's gonna do too much. And then I'm gonna make sure I have new layer with layer mask chosen here. And then I'm going to hit okay. And now you'll see my image isolated on a transparent background. So one thing I always like to do, just to kind of test what my image looks like, you can see the background images here. If I make that layer visible, you can see the full image. This is my isolated image. Now, one thing I like to do is just add in a box. So I'm gonna draw out a rectangle. Of course, I'll have to add some color to it. We'll throw the amethyst bay purple in there and if i drag that layer down underneath the flip-flops you can see it looks pretty clean so sometimes with um you know tougher refinements you may find there's areas you know that that come through that you might have to click back into your mask and refine um, if that's the case let's say you know i want to make sure that this looks a little better here if i want to click into that and fix it you click into this layer mask thumbnail and boom you're right back in that layer mask so i can easily just fix that edge up and you can see as i'm zoomed in some of these edges that's why it's, it's usually pretty important to zoom and um, check check out your edges when you're doing any kind of refining to your masks. Now for the most part, I think this will work pretty well. There might be just a few edges and I'll sort of demonstrate. There's this polygonal lasso tool. If I really want to get an edge added in, I want this to be really crisp. I can just click that. Oh, and that one actually, that was add to selection. So we want to subtract it from the selection. So now you'll be able to see how to do both. And the trick is finding that first spot that you clicked into. So if I want to get into this edge too, I'm going to go ahead and get really down in here. And again, this is why it's really nice to do the masking this way because it does allow you to really refine, make sure your edges are crisp and, you know, 
It allows you to continue to edit if you need to go back and do any more edits. And it allows you to sort of clean up these areas. So there's this little bit of fogging. I want to eliminate those. And let's eliminate that here as well. And this could just be from using that smoothing that I used. But I want to make sure that none of that is visible on a dark background and that the edges are pretty clear. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit OK again. It's going to create another layer mask, which is fine. You can see some of the differences if I turn this mask on and off. So I'm just going to, I'm satisfied with this one. So I'm going to delete this layer. And then I'll go ahead and delete that rectangle layer. We don't need that in there. Now, of course, as I mentioned, you can always add a adjustment layer here. So selecting this layer, I'm going to go ahead and create an adjustment layer. And I want to make this more of the brand colors. So the Amethyst Bay purple and green. And it, let's just try the master and see what that does. We got some purple coming through, which is pretty good. Let's use this one and go to greens. So I want to get this green to have a little bit more of that teal hue to it. Let's go to magentas and we'll select that. I'm just using the eyedropper here to select that color. Looks like we can make that a little bit of a darker purple, which might be nice. So once you have your layer adjustments done, what you'll want to do is then just save this and save it as a PSD file. And again, I usually like to keep that name just so I know, and then just add that edit in here. You can name it however you'd like. I'm not a big stickler for that. But like I said, I do like to usually keep the download name just so I can refer back to it if I need to find the original image for anything and then hit save. So you can see here if I go back to my background image and I turn off that adjustment layer, I still have that full image intact. I can also disable that layer mask and everything is intact in that masked layer that I created. So you want to make sure that when it says that no pixels are destroyed, that's what that means. You can always add pixels back or take them away as need be and, you know, sort of go back and forth with that in your editing process. So hopefully that was helpful. You'll want to upload that PSD file to assignment 2.1 for this week. And if you have any questions, just let me know.